obsessed much? I'm Michelle Halterman. I've got my obsessions, and I know you've got yours. I'm going to talk to my friends about theirs. This is Obsess Much. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Obsess Much. I'm Michelle Halterman, and today I am joined by one of my very best friends, Casey McDougall. Hi. Casey, what's your middle name? I forget. Oh, Brienne. Casey Brienne McDougall. <laughs> That's love it. Love Thanks. it. Irish? Yeah, so <laughs> Irish. Mostly Irish, huh. yeah. Good guess. Good guess. <laughs> uh, well, Casey, I feel like the main topic today, if you couldn't tell by our somewhat matching wardrobe, because I love a good theme, is we're going to talk about some witchy stuff, mm-hmm. some fun, just maybe out there. But like, if you're into it, you're into it. If you're not, you don't have to listen. But we love tarot cards. We yes. love astrology. We love crystals. crystals. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, so runes, all the things. We, um, I said, what are you wearing for this? And because uh, I was like, oh, I'll just wear a t shirt. But I was like, no, let's like do the theme. Mm-hmm. Let's do a little like witchy inspired stuff. And I, she she texted me a picture of, I was like, I love the yin yangs. I love everything on your tank top for those of you watching. And then I was like, I'll, sh- I'll text you a picture of what I'm wearing. And it turns out we're both wearing cut out <laughs> shoulders, totally matching. So weird. All black. Um, no, we are not in a coven <laughs> yet. <laughs> um, although we both did stand in on different seasons of American Horror Story. Oh, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Which is quite the experience. But uh, so I know Casey from, like I just said, standing in. We met each other working on this Netflix movie called Wine Country so with good. a bunch of amazing female comedians from Saturday Night Live. Um, I stood in for Paula Pell. Rachel Dratch. Which people have told me you my can whole see life, it. you're like Rachel Dratch. You yeah. can see it. You can see it. <laughs> yeah. For sure. um, we met some of our very good friends, some of our mm-hmm. very best friends in LA working on that movie. It was a great time, couple of months. Um, and what do you remember about meeting me? <laughs> so that I can inflate my ego a bit. Oh my gosh. Oh gosh. I mean, I'm like, what story? Because I just have like a blip in my mind of meeting you. I remember we were. Where did we meet? We had to meet at like a parking garage. Was it a studio? I can't remember where we met. I just remember us getting on a bus and us talking yep. to each other. Yep. And I really liked you right away. And I know we had a specific interaction that I, I honestly can't remember anymore. Right. And the uh, same. <laughs> it's same. Like literally. But all- I was like, I like you. I knew that. I was like, oh, good. Yeah. She's cool. Yeah. Literally all I remember is like getting on that bus. <laughs> yeah, it was a bus. Yeah. And like out of all the girls, I was like, yeah, you're my girl. Like I was like instantly i don't know and it, it was like that unspoken like we don't know what it is yeah we're like we're gonna get along yeah <laughs> so much laughter on that set so um and now it was on wine country that uh i started to find out that you were into tarot cards and um you were at that time maybe just doing it for fun and i didn't yeah, ha- at you that point were yeah a big okay so at that point yeah. how long had you been into tarot cards about five years Okay. Yeah. So good but amount. Not, but it had been kind of secret. Like right. I, I just started doing it on set for everyone from like the eighties to the grips to the stand-ins um, the year before, 20, 2017. So yeah, it was a kind of a newish thing that I was sharing with people. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. Um, and then how did, how has it developed since then? Because we, sh- we did that in what, 2018? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how has it since developed? <sighs> Well, since then, your so, powers have grown. <laughs> they, it's true. It's really weird. when you tap in your intuition, it's like it just keeps growing. And um, so Michelle was actually the one that was like, you need to like make money from this. You need to like or at least put yourself out there more. And I was like, I don't know. And it was inspired by a, a girl that lived in my oh, building. That's right. Um, yes. A neighbor of mine who was making bank and mm-hmm. still is uh, from just this sort of thing. And I said, if she so can weird. do it, you can do it. Hell yeah. If that's something you want to pursue. So that summer, like I'm kind of a nerd. Like I used to have a production company and I, uh, I've done a lot in like the production editing writing side. And so I went to this like digital Hollywood event. I think it was at like the Getty Center. And so I learned about Twitch through that. And I, at that time I had no idea what Twitch was. And I thought, oh, I could promote tarot on Twitch. 
I'm not a gamer. And I had a, a big of a le- bit of a learning curve in the beginning because people were like, oh, like you're not a gamer. And but now I have like a pretty consistent following. Like it's not <laughs> it's not huge at all. I but, mean, girls get on there just to be in hot tubs. Yeah. So like you can really girls. do anything. Yeah. You yeah. can do anything. <laughs> so I have a moderator. It's like it's it's grown. And since then, like, you know, I make some money from that. And I have a lot of private clients now like that are on the side. And um. Yeah, it's it's been great. Oh, but you were talking about how it's changed. So I used to just read the cards, but I actually figured out that I'm a physical medium, which isn't surprising because I've always been able to pick up on people's energy since I was a kid. And, you know, we're actors, so it's like kind of natural. But yeah. Um, yeah, I've learned that sometimes people come through. I don't see ghosts or whatever, but I feel people's energy like I get certain symbology that to me that means things you've you've seen. You've seen. Right. I don't know what I'm and like, out. yeah, go into that. So like mm-hmm. stuff on the right side will will mean something different than the left side. Yes. So I pick up things in different parts of my body. So if I was doing a reading for you and let's say I feel like energy, kind of a heat on my left side, that's your mom's side of the family. Right is your dad's side of the family. Um, Also like front of my body versus the back of my body. It's like different chakra points light up and that tells me things. I often, especially for my good friends like you, there's a couple other friends here I can tell, like, if you guys are missing, like, certain nutrients, like, you need to eat more oh, of this. Girl. You need to eat more of that. Have you been holding back on me? Because you know I eat like crap. I, ha- I haven't gotten anything specifically. <laughs> okay, that's I know good. I've gotten water for you before, but you're- To drink more water? Yes, I've definitely gotten that for you before. Yeah. <laughs> Cue that water sign. Come on now. Hold on. <laughs> mm. But I've had creepy things happen. Like, my friend Malik, I was talking to him, and I said, you need to eat more cherries. He's like, I'm literally eating a salad with cherries right now. Like- you can't make no, this stuff no, up. true. You on were, your Twitch yeah. streams, you'll something random will come to you, and mm-hmm. the person will be like, "Yeah," or you'll be like, "Yeah, um, I'm not feeling connected to you. Can you t- like, what are you doing? Are you like distracted right now? Like, can you take a breath and be like, "Yeah, I actually was totally doing something else and not paying attention." <laughs> I always know. That. Yeah. I was like, "How do you know that?" I'm like, yeah, I yeah, don't yeah. Know. That's why I'm on your Twitch streams, and like, if I'm, I'm like, I'm like, okay, I'm with you. I'm with you, Casey. Let me take a breath. <laughs> I, yeah, that's I'm what I always say. I, take a breath, Michelle. You just take a yeah, breath, please. I'm focusing. <laughs> All right. So while. Well, uh, uh, we will link your obviously your Twitch channel um, oh, okay. in the YouTube and on the comments. But um, why don't you tell them what your Twitch? Uh, oh, name my is. handle is Casey Ace of Hearts. It's all one word. Twitch.tv slash Casey. Little underscore in there or no? Not for that. No, Casey's. I get confused all the time. Okay, but for my Instagram, it's underscores. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I suggest you check out Casey's Twitch stream um, for some tarot readings. She also, and you want to describe uh, what runes are? Sure. So runes are like this ancient alphabet. Um, the Nordic runes, there's this whole idea that they were gifted um, through Odin, got the gift of the runes. And the runes are considered these like sen- sentient, um, energetic filled, uh, basically markings that when they come into your life or when you start seeing them or they pop up in a reading, it's it's giving you a lot of information and actual healing in a certain area of your life. So I use them to really point out big themes in your life. So I'll do a, a spread of tarot cards and usually just throw the runes on top and see where they land. And um, yeah, it's really cool. It's it's interesting. You can also, there's so much you can do with runes. You can carve them into candles. You can do intentional work with them. It's just, I find it fascinating. So Yeah. Um, what are some misconceptions people have about all this stuff? Like, oh, such a good yeah. question. And like, like you have a point of view of like, well, I can't tell you that this is going to happen, but I can, and talk about spirit guides and all that. Just okay, talk about cool. all of it. Just talk about it. So, okay. So first of all, tarot, I feel like is this weird, like people are afraid of it sometimes. Not in LA, people are not afraid of it, but um, yeah. like, oh, it's this like scary thing. And it, like, don't tell me how I'm going to die. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to see that. So I'm very clear with my guides, my spirit guides and how I do my readings is that I'm only going to know what you need to know for your highest good. If it's something dark or whatever, I don't necessarily want to know that unless there's something that you can do about it. I've only once in any of my readings seen a death come up because most of the time, like for example, the death card, people, that's a misconception. People think it means death. It just means something is ending in your life. But I literally have seen that once. And so I worded it very carefully to the person. I said, I see a change, like a permanent change happening in your life at the end of the year. And he said, well, my mom is really not doing well and we think she's going to pass away. And I was like, okay, he said it, not me. Right, <laughs> so, right. Um, so like that. And also tarot, it doesn't really predict your future. Right. That's a misconception. Really bad readers will say things like, 
um, this thing's never going to happen to you or this. All it is, it's a snapshot of your energy at the time that you're getting the reading. That's it. That's all it is. Um, some readers, I think it's unethical to go beyond a certain time frame. I think for you and for other friends, like when I've done readings, the farthest they go out is like weeks or months. Mm -hmm. Some yeah, people you, usually, do you like to do like about three months or so. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's usually what I'm guided to do. I won't go beyond five years because I think I don't want anybody to get an idea in their head that something's stuck a certain way, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, there's that. That's because there's, you know, different paths we can take and yes, obviously choices we can make. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's more of like, and I think that a good thing about your readings is that there is this um, kind of overall positivity of like, like no matter what, I see like I'm going to give you the positive aspect of like, OK, you could do this or you could do this or like mm -hmm. just be just be aware of this. Be, you know, yeah. so it's never like anything scary or negative or no, because bad. all it is at the end of the day, like I really believe that we're just here to like experience life. I believe that we're spiritual beings having a human experience. It's all good. But when I see a reading, it's either like, hey, you're in alignment, you're doing good, or you're cutting yourself off from something. So you are responsible for your own life. That's how I also do my readings is like, and you've seen me be like, you need to change this or you can keep doing this, but it's going to hurt you in the long run. Yeah. So everything is is possible is yeah. how I see it. Um, another reason Casey's one of my best friends is I will always text her. So have you seen this latest UFO documentary? <laughs> have you seen this lady latest documentary on like like what kind mm -hmm. of crazy stuff have we like seen oh, like so many things I don't even know like I don't I can't remember the name I know word. but then there was another one where like it was like witchy stuff was happening like witches and warlocks and and people back in the day that said that claimed they could do things and oh like the person in the in the box where it was like completely dark in the oh, room that show and like the media yes. yeah surviving death or something surviving death check that out I have mixed it, but <laughs> yeah <laughs> But yeah, no, there's some weird people are doing weird things. And also, that's another thing that I'm very adamant about is like so many people who are into like new age stuff. I try to make it as practical as possible. Like people get really out there and ungrounded. I'm like, be grounded in your life. Right. Like, don't get too because <sighs> it's dangerous. We both know that we've met people in L.A. that will take it to another level. Yeah. Another when, level. When they're talking to you, it's almost like they're not here. They're like, yeah. Hi. And Casey's like the most grounded about all this stuff. <laughs> like, like take what you want, leave the rest. Exactly. Like, like yeah. and I always say, like, you don't have to do what I say. Like, just do what you want. I'm just telling you what I see. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. Um, also, another thing we got mm -hmm. to do together, what, a couple months ago, is oh, get yeah. our auras read. <gasps> we went to a place downtown, downtown LA, um, called Halo Orographic. Yeah, check it out on Instagram. I recommend. And uh, you go in this room. Uh, you put your hands on a device of metal some plates. Metal plates. Of? Yeah. Um, then he puts something over your hands. Is that right? Oh yeah, I forgot about that. To like um, keep them steady. And then you just like look in the camera and you don't aren't, blink. Don't blink. <laughs> and then, like, <laughs> you know, the picture is a couple seconds, and you come out of there with <laughs> this like cool Polaroid of different colors around you, and. No one person's color scheme is like another. Like you can have so the cool. same colors, but they're always going to be in slightly different pattern. Yeah. Now mine was, we were both so different. <laughs> mine was like fire. I was on fire, yellow, yes. red, and red, orange. orange. Yeah. Um, <laughs> mine, and you're, mine was like blue and purple and pink. And like, it was, it was so interesting. With a we, little white. Oh yeah. The white for yeah. the healing. Cause I, I, I do consider myself a healer, but yeah. And the guy sits down with you afterwards <laughs> yeah. and explains everything so yes. well. And you, I guess you, maybe you're not allowed to record what he says, I think. Oh, yeah, you said like that, that. But I don't know why. he says, like, whatever you come out of this remembering that I said is what you're supposed to remember. I don't remember him saying that. That's hilarious. Oh, okay. Maybe, <laughs> That's good. I don't know, but. That's good. There were certain words to me that he told me that stuck out, and I wrote them down after when, once I had the time. Yep. And it was like. Manifest Manifester. This. Yeah. I Wait have time. them in my phone somewhere. Oh, you do? Do you okay. remember anything? I remember that? everything from mine. So so interestingly enough, the so the right side of your body is what you're putting out into the world currently. The left side is energy that's coming in, like a shift that's coming into your energy field. So I remember I had a lot of blue and that was about communication and listening to others and empathy. And I had pink coming in, which is rebel energies. Like, yeah, you're going to have a lot of 
rebellious changes in your life with the white light. I'm like, this is so weird. What else yeah. did you have? Uh, words? The, the words I remember him saying are manifest, confidence, creativity, purpose, safety, grounded, and physical. Oh, and I, I was it. more like a grounded, right? And you yes. were more of like- like. Yeah. Like it's, oh, and that's the thing. The colors are what you're focusing on. It doesn't mean that you're missing anything. It's just like, that's your focus right now. And mine was more on kind of, I guess, spiritual side. Yours is like making things happen in the 3D, which I find so interesting yeah. that we both, and we thought, we thought we were going to get different colors than we did, I think. I yeah. Think but again, I was just I going know. based on what my favorite colors I were. I mean, too. I was like, I'm going to have green for the heart chakra, yeah. which, yeah, that was really funny. Um, And also like I straight up was holding back tears. When he was talking to us, you remember, I, I no. turned to you and I was like, I didn't want to cry. I didn't oh. want to cry. <laughs> it, it, had like a ther- it was like a therapy session. Yeah, it was. No, it was From intense. a guy who doesn't know us. Doesn't know us at all. So I very much suggest, and I want to do it once a year for sure. Yeah, we should do it. When, we to- when did we do it before? It was like, uh, it was like after my show was over. So maybe November, October, November. Oh, ish, right? right around my birthday or something. Totally. Or or whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, so, Okay go into what the differences are between sun sign rising and moon i would love to as if like (laughs) you living in la don't know this already but i do find that so many people know it here okay so your sun sign it's it's the area of your life that you decided to focus on to shine a light on while you're here it's your ideology it's the way that you view the world so for example michelle is a can i use you as an example yes okay great please (laughs) Michelle is a cancer, so she looks at things through the lens of feeling, like she feels her way through the world, but it's through um, this idea of like, you you put attention on things that deserve it. You pull attention away from things that don't deserve it. You're very nurturing. Like you believe that we should be like looking out for each other to an extent. And um, that's how you look at the world. Your rising sign is how you, it's your, it represents your body. It's in your first house on your chart and your first house, you can kind of look at it as one starts with you. So it's your, uh, your Gemini rising, right? Yeah. yeah, you're totally a Gemini rising. <laughs> um, so Gemini rising means that's how she manifests in the world. So you manifest through thought, speech, communication, which makes sense. Uh, Gemini rules the third house. So that's like, makes sense. We're literally doing communication. Should have majored right in now. communications. Yeah, that's right. where my downfall was. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what was your major? Music, Music industry. Okay. I told, I was like, I did not know that that was Michelle's. Yeah. It's crazy. Okay. Cool. It's. Well, it kind of makes sense still. Why I'm in debt. <laughs> <laughs> but I should have listened to my mom and just majored in communication. Yeah, like, isn't that funny? That's where you ended up going anyways. Yeah. But you, so you, the way that, like, you strongly manifest in the world is through your intellect and through communication. That's how you get things done. So, like, like so your, smart. Yes. Oh, my God, totally. <laughs> I, I'm biased towards air signs, but, um, and so, then, okay, what's yes. your moon? Oh, yeah. Sun is how you see things, how you see the world. Yes. Rising is how, how you, you manifest. manifest it. And then moon is, my moon is Capricorn. Okay, Capricorn. So moon is like how you feel at home. It's how you, it's what makes you feel safe in this world. So Capricorn, Capricorns are, it's an earth sign. So it's slow energy. I have an earth sign too with Taurus. So we like things to be slow and steady. Capricorn is like, in order for me to feel safe, I need to know that like my future is um, stable. I need to know that money is stable, career, health, that makes you feel stable. And then that can often affect how you live the rest of your life, really. So when that's kind of unstable or when there's a hard aspect to your moon, you might be feeling like, ah, I'm all shaky. Yeah. yeah. Someone asked me once I told them like what <laughs> all my signs were. Someone, I think, asked me if I was like motivated or like, you know, and I go, actually, I'm probably like 95% lazy. And like the 5% of me that is like trying to accomplish stuff is my my Capricorn. <laughs> Oh, that's really funny. But yeah. I also like don't really know what I'm talking about most of the time. <laughs> no, it's like I, I yeah, oh, we should have. It's like cuz aren't Capricorns like very like Oh, they keep going. Yeah, they don't gotta stop do, gotta do, gotta, yeah. My business partner is that he's a Capricorn and he's like yeah. oh, Capricorn. So, it's cuz it's like that's I mean, but that's probably a lot of us is like we have those down days where we're like oh, uh, this isn't going to happen. I shouldn't do this, blah, blah. And then we have those days where we're like, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. So it all depends. Like your sixth house is your day-to-day activity. I can't remember what your sixth house is, but that would be how you do things. And my sixth house is in Capricorn. So I'm very like, if I don't have a routine every day that feels productive, I feel like, ugh. Capricorn is intense. Capricorn's intense yeah. energy. People tend to actually be more depressed during that time of the year because it's like the winter. Well, yeah. the Northern Hemisphere, it's the winter. So it's, 
it's a compl- each sign is so complicated, but there's a lot of myths that people say like, oh, I don't have anything with this sign. Everybody has every aspect of the zodiac in their chart. It's just different amounts in different ways. Yeah. So you can go, you can just like Google different um, websites that will tell you like what your Go to astro.com. It's the best one. Astro.com. Click on, oh, sorry. Click on extended chart selection, enter your information. It's the best one. And then you can kind of save your chart. And they also do daily horoscopes, but some of them out there are just very, another thing that I have a pet peeve about is astrology and tarot should be about concepts, not manifestations. Cause a lot of times people see a card and they're like, that's what this means. And it's like, no, it's, it's how you apply it in your life. Right. It's not set in stone. I could give you and, uh, Paul a different reading <laughs> and, and it would be, it could be the same cards and they would mean different things. True. Mm-hmm. And there's what, like, minor arcana major arcana Mm -hmm. so arcana means mystery there's 78 cards there's the major arcana are the are major themes i kind of think of it like think of it like chapters in your life and the minor arcana are like day-to-day activities and sometimes tarot readings are not always like epic it could literally like it could literally be like oh today you're gonna change your appearance and you might be like oh i'm getting a haircut yeah. Something simple like that. Nothing like epic. Is there a reason why like some readers will just do like three cards, some will do five, some will do like 10, like just based on their preference of- I think that's all it is. They'll just like, keep pulling cards and cards and cards. I am so, speaking of rebellious, I don't like to do things the the traditional way where it's like the Celtic cross and all that. I, I just pull intuitively. I don't know what it is, but I just don't like, because I think sometimes you get very limited because you think this card has to mean this thing and this has to mean that. And I just don't like it. Yeah. Um, and by the way, real quick, you <laughs> need to know what city you were born in and the exact time that you yes. were born to get your sun, moon rising yeah. and your your whole birth chart. Is it birth chart, natal chart? Same the thing. Same thing. Yeah. Same thing. <laughs> and you can go into depth into like what houses have what planets and what oh, this God, and yeah. that. It's endless. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I um I had this guy on set recently. Turns out he's literally born one day after me. We were that so close. Weird. And he knows so much about birth charts like he looked at mine he was like i'm gonna know your whole soul like i'm gonna know everything about you i was like okay but i was like i was like but yes but also yes it's like go on um it was like the only guy that i've met because i feel like more typically more girls are into this kind of stuff than guys i've yeah i'm the only guy i've met who's like knew that much about stuff yeah it's cool yeah um (laughs) all right what else can we talk about that's like we, we talk about runes. We talk about tarot cards. Oh, tarot. Crystals. Oh, crystals. Yeah. I, you, I got you hooked recently. Dude, I had to stop with that money spending on the crystals. <laughs> crystals. Can- I'm up to like 20 now and I'm. Wow. I got them. I don't have a, sh- I don't have room in my tiny place for like a shrine, but I have mm-hmm. them on these like plates and I have them on my little desk in my kitchen, my kitchen table. Oh, that's cool. And they're just cool. like all spread out in like this circle. And because the first time I got crystals was with you at mm-hmm. which shop did we go to? Rock Paradise in, is it Canoga Park? I don't know where. Yeah. Rock Paradise. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That place was. Um, and I'd be like, oh, this one's pretty. I want that. Okay. That one's pretty. I want. Yeah. I don't care what it means. Yeah. And then you'd what? be like, <laughs> yeah. And you'd be like, oh, you should get that. I'd be like, okay. And then before you know it, they're giving us, they're giving me a basket. And I'm just like, I need this. I need this. And yeah. so then I went to, um, what's the place in Highland Park? House so, of oh, Intuition? House of Intuition. I went by myself and and I was, <laughs> this is why no one should have this much free time. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> or this much like extra spending money. And I was like, uh, I'm going to go get every crystal that represents good luck. So I Googled which crystals are for good luck. And I don't know like we what I would like necessarily wanted out of it other than good like luck. good things <laughs> yeah and I was like okay so I went in there and I was like do you have this 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 and so like yeah the I just I have about 20 now and it's um it's it's good though like do you chart we can talk about this well oh so <laughs> I think the first time I went with you they gave mm-hmm. me the little the whitish clear oh selenite which is like to my charge mm-hmm. so yeah other but I don't I don't go as far as like with what the full you moon could do. And, mm. and salt. I don't, I'm not even that good with either, but selenite is the safest thing. Selenite is considered a crystal that's, it cleanses your aura, it cleanses everything. I just love selenite. I like anything with salt. Salt always makes me feel better. Salt is really wonderful for cleansing. Um, Florida anything. water? Florida water, yeah. Still you have it. Your local metaphysical shop. <laughs> Wait, you don't, you don't have any yet? No, I don't. I almost, you know what's so weird is I almost brought you a bottle of something. I was running around this morning though, and I was like, I feel like I, I had a feeling like you might need something like that. 
I'll have to send you away with something yeah. before you go to New York. You did provide me with sage. Yes. And Palo Santo. Palo Santo. Uh, needed that for my apartment. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely needed that. Um, we all do from time to time. Uh, and yeah, I, I'm leaving for New York in a couple of weeks. Um, I won't talk about the exact job, but I am yeah. doing a job there for a couple months. So I am so glad that you made it here um, yes. before I take my before sabbatical, yeah. <laughs> my East Coast sabbatical. Um, and yeah, I, I hope to continue the pod over there. Yeah, you should. In one form or another, even though I literally have only had help from friends or from Paul here, <laughs> and I don't know how to do anything on my own. Um, quick story, though. Went to Guitar Center oh, yeah. on Friday to purchase microphones and another little audio recorder that my friend suggested I buy. I go in there, and it was like no one was there. Like There were like maybe two people behind these two different counters, like the registers. They were helping other people, and then like no one was coming to me helping me and like, I went up to a girl being like yeah I need some help with my she's like this isn't my department I was like oh okay well I don't really know what department I'm looking for so but then she's like okay well we don't have like let me go in the back and see if we have this I go great she never came back <laughs> then I see another guy who works there and after he finishes waiting on a guy he goes what's your name and I go oh you <laughs> Like, wow, this is actually going to be turned into like a cool, like friendly experience after it started out so badly. Um, it's like he wants to know my name. So yeah. that's great. And I said, Michelle. And then he just goes, he's like staring at me. And I go, um, oh, did you? I'm sorry. Is that is that what you just asked me? And he goes, what you need? I was like, oh, you don't, oh, you don't want to know my name and you don't really want to help me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, Why are you here? Yeah. And I was just like, yeah, microphone. He like, you know, shows me over to the, and I was like, they didn't even have Come what on. I was looking for. Wait, but which one did you, where? At Hollywood. In Hollywood. Oh, well. Yeah. Okay. But that was, I don't know if you've ever had any awkward encounters like that. Oh, never, never had an awkward encounter. <laughs> What's your name? What you need? Oh, nope. Two different things. Okay. <laughs> Thought you wanted to be nice to me, but no, you don't. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> Uh, oh God. Okay. Well, oh, so what? speaking of when you were talking about like how you feel stuff like mm -hmm. energy wise, it reminded me to talk about an experience I just had on the Queen Mary. Oh yeah. I want to hear more about so that. So I have not, this, this is probably my first ever ghost encounter and I'm okay with that because I don't need like having more of these would freak me out. Yes. I, I know what you mean. I'll probably have another ghost encounter at some point in my life, but so I'm doing um, a background job for, God, so many days, like six days on the Queen Mary. At night, right? Was it? Or no? Uh, sorry. Like a big chunk of it, like a 16-hour day. Oh, okay. <laughs> like so yeah. day, midday, night. night, all this stuff. Um, and we're in this like ballroom. Um, we're just like doing a bunch of dancing and stuff. And a lot of the time I'm just sitting at like a cocktail table trying to not work, basically. I'm <laughs> just sitting there. And this happened to me like at least three times, maybe four over the course of a week where I would just like feel as if someone was like um, just slightly touching the back of my and I think it was always my left side. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. But yeah, it was just like a light, a light Ooh, touch, weird. like not harsh, not pushing. No, just not, like, Hi. Yeah. And then I would like be like, well, there, there's 200 backgrounds. So I'm sure it was just a, a background person who was bumping into me and I would look back and there'd be like no one there. <laughs> I'd be like, okay. And I didn't think anything of it until the third time. Like, and whether or not, I don't know. I just didn't put it together that like, oh, the Queen Mary's haunted and blah, yes. blah. But then I was like, after the third time, I was like, hold up. Okay. Okay. I think I know what's going on here. Now, another background guy, um, somehow it came up that he also experienced the same exact thing. Oh. And I, I had like a loud scream in background holding where I was like, ah. And everyone was like, are you okay? I was like, yeah, it's just that we both found out that we've had the same experience. I was like, oh. Um, but yeah, what, you want to talk about any of your encounters or your experiences? The only time that I, I had something happen when I went to the Mark Twain house, which is in Hartford, Connecticut. I went with a friend and they have these like ghost tours every fall. And I was like, oh yeah, I'll do this because it just seems kind of kitschy and fun. When we went in there, I don't know how to explain it. It sounded something like between hearing someone speak and like, I don't know what else to say except a cartoon, but it was like the creepiest thing. We literally heard like, oh, and I was like, I looked over at my friend and he's like, did you hear that? I'm like, yes. And other people were like, yeah, I heard it. And they're like, 
the the person who was leading the tour was like, listen, I don't even like doing these tours that much because it freaks me out. There's people have reported that they hear weird things. We don't know. And there was a lot of, there's a lot of tragedy. I love, I'm obsessed with Mark Twain, but there's a lot of tragedy that happened in his life. So it kind of makes sense in that house that there would be ghosts and energetic imprints. Then there was this room we went in upstairs and the tour goes, so as we're in this room and right before she says this, I feel, oh, remember those things that were out when we were kids, like the, um, oh God, those jelly like tubes that were filled with glitter. Yeah. Okay. Imagine the feeling of that on your leg, but it's ice cold. And I was like, what the hell? And she goes, people always talk about how temperature changes in here. And my friend and I, look, I'm like, did you feel it? He's like, it was the AC. It was the AC. I'm like, that didn't feel like AC. It felt like a cold physical thing touching us. So anyway, there they had tons of like weird stories there, but that was like the weirdest thing in terms of like like a ghost story. That's the yeah. closest I've had to something like that. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um have you are there any like experiences with fellow like tarot card readers or psychics or mediums that were either like a really good experience, really bad experience, like Oh, just ones that I've met or yeah. had readings from? Or any that you're like, I would never go back to that. There's a, I had my palm read once and the guy was so abrasive. He looked at my hand and was like, oh, you are not good at relationships. Oh, damn. He's like, oh my gosh, you're going to have so many in your life. But, and I was like, thanks. And like, that's the thing that stuck out to me the most. That was kind of weird. But, um, for the most part, I've had some pretty good readers. I remember, Oh, my sister had a bad reader. Like sometimes you just get people who are like what we were talking about, where they just say like, this is what's going to happen and you're screwed. And who wants to hear that? Like, I didn't pay you money to hear that. Like, just help me out. I see it as like, you should be guiding someone, not Mm -hmm. making a declaration, but I haven't had really too many, but I'm also very picky. Yeah. Like when I go to places, I'm like, I can just tell when someone, I don't know. I just pick up the vibe. Like "Mm, you seem a little too kitschy. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I might've told you like, I don't know how many of these stories I told you, but like I went to, I go through these phases of like, like I need, I need like a fix. Like I need a reading. Yeah, I need no, a, you for know. sure. So I went, you know, it's like, <laughs> I have this crush on a guy and I like really need to know me like <laughs> stupid, <laughs> oh, no. stupid stuff. I was, um, that's what happens when you like musicians, y'all, you know. Oh God, musicians. Oh, we should talk about that. <clears throat> Musician phases. Yeah, okay. Um, But I went to House of Tuition like, and think this was like, one in Silver Lake, maybe? Okay, I haven't been to that one. Um, but I had this woman who, like, basically spent the entire reading just, like, wanting me to close my eyes and breathe. And I was like, this is how I'm spending no, This is no, how I'm no, spending no. my money for me to just sit here no. and breathe? I was mm-hmm. very disappointed. That's not okay. Why? Um, Why are you stalling? <laughs> <laughs> um, I had another one where, like, I went to her house in... The, ho- the East Hollywood, like Los Feliz area. That was a cool experience because she did tell me something like specific, like, oh, like there's a guy with the first initial of, and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she told me something else specific that hasn't come true yet, but Ooh. I don't want to like, but I'm still waiting to see if that comes true. Yeah. Because even the timeline might've changed. You never know. But she also said, <laughs> she also was like, oh, no, you're having kids. You're, you're going to have kids. Like, oh. Girl, um, you want to check that time? <laughs> you want to check in on that again? Um, then I went through another phase recently where I was, like, just getting, like, the names of um, these readers or mediums um, through friends of friends. And I had one who, like, left me a really long, like, voicemail that oh, one was pretty yeah. interesting. She did tell me like something about my grandma. She basically like the message I got out of it was like anything that you think you sh- you could do or sh- or want to do, just go for it. Oh, I, I was love like that. Look, even if she tells that to everyone, even if she has no ability whatsoever, sometimes you just want to hear that. Sometimes yeah. you just need a stranger to be like, whatever you want to do, just go for it. Yeah, no, it's true. <laughs> and I kept hearing stuff about like my is it throat Throat chakra chakra Mm -hmm. and I was like so I need to be talking so I need to be doing a podcast like I would turn it into like yeah no she's talking about podcasts yeah I think I need to do a podcast (laughs) that makes sense so you could just turn it into whatever you're yeah it's whatever works for you it might mean something else to somebody else like Um, yeah I also texted (laughs) what (laughs) this other chick (laughs) I don't know if I showed you I gotta show you the text chain she how she works is that she just sets up a time. You book a time with her. Let's mm-hmm. say next Wednesday at noon. 
she doesn't know anything about you and she just channels into your spirit and she just texts you a reading. Like she'll pull oh, cards cool. and just text you. Is it? I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, I would want to, I yeah, would yeah. want to see. No, I'm going to show see. you after this. But uh, I will say I was heading out the door to a job and maybe I wasn't fully present, but still. She told me like, just be in your body. Just like be in your body. That makes sense. I actually agree with that. Okay. You. Because, Big time. I do. Yeah. I think I've said that to you. Uh, maybe not in those words, but yeah. Or like feel your feelings. Or I was like, look, as a comedian, like I'm trying to not to feel my feelings. feelings. <laughs> like, makes us feel better. Yeah. No, that's, I'm trying to avoid <laughs> feeling anything real. That's So that one I did not like. But you know what? You live and you learn and you spend your money and then you're like, now I'm I'm done. Like I'm done for a while and I'm just yes. going to stick with Casey. That's, yeah, just stick with just me. Gonna just stick with me when you need to know if you, you know, should you dye your hair. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I've probably asked you the dumbest. I like, I laugh because I think that that's cool. I think it's like, I like it when people ask me like what you would call mundane questions like that or or like, should I do this? Should I do that? Because it's like epic life questions because it's all the same thing. It's really the same thing. Yeah. What was I going to say? about Oh, the channeling thing. I've started doing that before I, I yeah. meet with a client. I like quiet myself and I write things down. And every time I've done that, because it started to occur to me that the tarot cards are like kind of a crutch. Like they tell you things, but it's like really what I'm picking up on. So I've so far, those have been like pretty very spot on. Like when okay. I'm so anyway. I haven't done that with you yet, but I will. Um, yeah, I will be spending part of my time during this next job living in Connecticut. Yeah. Is there any advice you have for me for being a Connecticut girl? <laughs> and also, okay. have you ever been to the Hamptons? I have never been to the Okay. Hamptons. Have I? No, no, I have not. Okay, well. The Cape. I mean, no big deal, but I plan on like, I don't know, being in the Hamptons this summer. You should do For my birthday. Be, you should do that. That'll be so fun. Now, what? the only thing I know about Connecticut is hmm. Mystic Pizza. <laughs> I used to live near there. Um, Should I go? I think, actually, I really think you'd like Mystic. It's a very cutesy little okay. touristy town. It's sweet. It's cute. It, I mean, to me, here's the thing. I grew up in Connecticut, and I wanted to get out my whole life because it's, <laughs> it's a boring rural place. Well, I also wanted to get out of New Jersey. No offense. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> like, you just, you, it's like, oh, yeah. everything's so, now I appreciate it. Like, oh, everything was safe and, like, boring. Right? Yeah. I'm very lucky. Same. Same. <laughs> but um, places, okay. If you want to try some good pizza, you got to go to Pepe's okay. Pizza. It's like famous. New Haven would be the closest one okay. I think to you. Um, since you're going to be like closer to New York, um, I mean, there's just so much to do. Stanford is is like it's kind of a busy like industrial type of city. Not industrial, like business. It's you Apparently might kind of want to get out and do some fun things. There is a dry bar. <laughs> my friend, I'm actually shocked. My friend was. <laughs> My friend Lauren, who I'll be staying with, shout out Lauren. She's like texting me the other day, just like, by the way, there's a dry bar. I was like, that's cool. Awesome. Connecticut, growing up, I was so frustrated because it, we were always like the last to get like the cool things. It's like we're surrounded by New York and Boston. Like, why do we not? Right. And know? I always ask what people from Connecticut, are you a Yankees fan or a Red Sox fan? Red Sox. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. We bonded over that when we first got. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm from New Jersey. Yes, mm -hmm. I love the Red Sox. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, not sorry. You got to be careful here, though, when you say when we won um, the World Series. And I remember I was on set. I think I was working on Veep. And I was like, yes, yes. And people were looking at me like they were going to murder me because we won against the Dodgers. Well, yeah. I was like, was, oh, I have to be more careful. I, <laughs> it's not as if I was at a bar in L.A. Uh, while they were winning, um, yelling at a little girl who was rooting for the Dodgers. I never did that. Oh, I never no, would so do I you. would never do that. <laughs> That must have been really funny. <sighs> Regret. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Violence and mystery. I love kids. Um, Casey, mm. let me ask you. Sure. Uh, what was something that you were obsessed with growing up <laughs> that you only just remembered to tell me today? <laughs> I can't. My family and friends from back home were going to be like, how did you not think of this? I knew I was going to be on the show called Obsessed Much. <laughs> She's like, I'm not really obsessed with anything. I, I know. I kept saying that. I'm like, I don't know what you mean. I don't. Really I mean, like I like anything. this one book and I like this one movie. But <laughs> today she just, I'll just say it for you. Today she in the car, she just goes, oh, my God, Hanson. Hanson. I love Hanson. <laughs> I was obsessed with Hanson when I was like, it was started when I was 12 years old. Okay. Now and, in love with just one of them, all three of Taylor them. Taylor Hanson was my favorite. Yeah, of course. Zach was adorable. Isaac annoyed me. Mm. Um. But I just and you were closest in age to. Oh shoot, I don't know. I, I don't know. think I think Taylor. Okay, 
So I had like all these ideas. You're like for sure going to marry him. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I'm definitely going to meet him one day. And I did, but it, well, not really. I touched him. It's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> but I saw. Touched by an angel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so funny. I will come to you. I didn't watch it. <laughs> I, did. it I will come. Probably too I saw them 11 times. From the age nice. of 12 I to love 22. that you remember that that was the number. Yeah. Because, like, I've seen Stephen Kellogg a million times. I don't remember how many. I've oh, seen NSYNC see, a bunch. I don't remember how many. Like, I would just mm. estimate. I feel like that's normal, though. Like, the fact that I, like, counted it, like, I'm 11 times. I uh. like that you think that's normal. <laughs> also, 1-1. One, one. You love 1-1. One, one. I do. 1-1-1. One, one, one. Like Angel numbers. Angel number. Yeah. So, I okay. So, here's the thing that I would do that was, like, really weird. I would, you remember all, like, the um, teen bop? Oh, all of those course. Magazines. And I'm wondering if this is going to be similar to my. Yeah. Oh, God. I would cut out everything. Mm, yep. My friends made fun of me. And my boyfriends just had to put up with this when I was a teenager. All oh, on my I wall. didn't have boyfriends. <laughs> <laughs> I'm amazed I did. Because of this alone would be like, wouldn't this drive you nuts? Yeah. When you would walk into my room, it would be like covered with handsome photos. And I would yeah. recycle them. I had a binder. Same. That had all the, f- and I just didn't care. Like in middle school, it was a little rough, but in high school, I just didn't care. And everyone thought it was funny that I was obsessed with it. Um, so you saw them all in Connecticut. You go to New York. You I go to went Boston. to New York. I went to Boston. Yep. I went to, I, I don't know if I went to Providence. I went everywhere. I went to the Cape to see them. The last time I saw them was at this really, did you ever go to the Middle East in Boston for concerts? Yes. I love that place. Yeah. So intimate. Because I went, I went to college in Boston. Yeah. So I went with two of my best friends from college and we went I ended up like it was general mission we were in the front I weaseled my way all the way front I remember I was wearing this really cute denim mini dress I was soaked in other people's sweat it was disgusting because everyone was crammed it was hot and at one point Taylor reached out his hand and I touched him oh. and it was just like oh my god yeah and it was like their underneath tour for and I don't know if anyone watching or listening is going to even know about Hanson you want to know all the details it was so it was so good and at this time also unrelated to Hanson when I was 13 I decided I wanted to be a drummer in eighth grade so I learned how to drum and so I would like I would play to like Hanson songs like <laughs> I had like a drum kit I'm, in the basement. I'm so dumb. Remind what? me, Taylor was not- Taylor was the keyboardist. The keyboardist. Zach Isaac, was the drummer. Zach and Isaac was the, was the guitarist. Guitar- gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. And they all sang. They all sang. Yeah. And they are still making music. I And also I would have never guessed like knowing you. <laughs> Isn't it weird? I know. But yeah. I still, it was so against my like personality type to become like obsessed. It was so yeah. weird because I was never like that. And I haven't been like that since. Although I did see- I've seen John Mayer nine times. Oh, you love John Mayer. Oh, I freaking love John Mayer. He's from Connecticut. And I'm like obsessed with that detail. Yes. I love that I learned this stuff about you that like I would have never expected. How many times have you seen John Mayer? Nine times. And you know that too? (laughs) Of course you do. (laughs) So weird. Did you ever come close to touching him or meeting him? I was in the fan. My friend and I, we used to alternate. uh, A guy actually would alternate being in the fan club. And and get like the tickets like super cheap that way. And we'd always renew our like sharing like a Netflix subscription. Yeah, basically. Yeah. And and he'd always get like the t-shirts and be like, I don't want these t-shirts. Do you want them? And I'd get all. And I have John all these Mayer t-shirts. Franklin. My tickets are better than yours. Like snarky. Like John Mayer's such a he's such a little bitch. But I kind of love that. He's My like tickets that. are better than yours. Yeah. Oh, because I got like club. good. Yeah, because I got good. T- it's not. That's a weird thing for a shirt. Sometimes I wear it and I'm like, this is not. I have. St- <laughs> what, I have, you have an extensive like Stephen Kellogg sh- t-shirt. Oh, I do you- have to buy a t-shirt from every tour. I, I completely understand. And that. I do have certain t-shirts that are strictly just from the fan club. You're reminding me though. I feel kind of sad about this because <laughs> this was like an era of my life. I had every, oh, Michelle, I, you could ask my sister. I had every single album that came out in every single version. I had German releases. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Remember, oh, it was the yeah. same goodie or something? B-side, UK version. They're all different. You I gotta donated get them. all of them to my library, my hometown library. And now I kind of feel sad about it. I had all, every single t-shirt that was ever available, whether they were knockoffs or legit, and I got rid of all of them. I don't have anything to show my Hanson obsession That's anymore. Sad. It's just a tale now. Because I have an entire drawer of just Stephen Kellogg shirts. <sighs> Save mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, so and any other Hanson crazy stories you want to share? I or? talked to Zach after a concert one time. On, on I Am? Oh, sorry, in <laughs> real AM. life. Like on after a concert <laughs> on I Am. Oh, oh. oh the door I, the door. I have a sound. gossipy story about, okay, so yeah. this girl I went to college with, she was also obsessed with Hanson. We were in the acting majors together, and um, 
Okay, but first of all, I went to a concert, and at the end of the concert, I just wanted to say that I talked to them. So I was like, hey, Zach, what size drumsticks do you use? Because there's different kinds. And he was like, <laughs> you know, it sounds weird. He was like, 2B. And I was like, cool, I use 3A. I'm a 34B. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> we should hang out. You're not married yet. Um, but my other friend, she was like... I don't even know what to say, say about her, but she was like, I'm going to meet Taylor Hanson one day and I'm going to like befriend him and we're going to create music together. And I was like, okay, she moved to LA way before I did. She somehow met him at some club because she did the uh, bottle service yeah. at clubs and stuff. She met him, got his number and they like talk. I haven't talked to her in years, but apparently they like her. She was like, I'm going to make this happen. I was never that intense bold yeah yeah bold yeah. are they all married with kids now oh yeah yeah They're like a super super even but you could catch family. them on the divorce side yeah sure <laughs> we're all divorces yeah <laughs> oh my god what was it oh what? you reminded me yes i i also had the the clippings from the magazines oh, yes. uh i also put together binders <laughs> it became out of control where it was like like binder for sync to the point where it was like oh, wow part one, part three, like three binders for NSYNC. Oh, yeah. Then it was like, I had to start a binder for Britney. Then I started a binder for Christine. Then I had a binder just for JC from NSYNC. And my mom was like, no, 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 no you no, no like, please just stick to one, fire hazard one is- pop person. Did you also, I also recorded every single appearance. Did you ever do that yeah. on the VHS? And I'd watch yeah. them over and over like a psycho. Uh-huh. Well, I miss the VHS. I do and I, I do don't. I, mean, I know. I- it's but so unrealistic, like uh, impractical, but I'm because I had, you know, every episode of X-Files on VHS. Oh, and at one my point, God. my mom was like, so we're in a new era. Can I get rid of these? Can I destroy these? Get the DVDs. Seriously. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. All right. So you love Hanson. Mm-hmm. You love yeah. witchy stuff. Yes. Now, you said to me over text, I love <laughs> French anything. I anything knew you were going to say that because I'm psychic. No, I just... <laughs> I was just about to say something yeah. in French. Je parle un peu de français. Yeah. Oh my I god. Love I took how many years of French did you take? Four. Me too. Oh, okay. I remember nothing. You oh. remember a lot. Because okay. I was obsessed. Yeah. I also hated my teachers. That's probably why. Wait, yeah. wait, wait. Oh, what? before what? we get into yes. the French, you reminded me. There was a girl I went to high school with who claimed that she would talk to Justin Timberlake on AIM like every day after school, and we were all like, "Sure." Yeah. Like, no, really, it's really him. It's really him. Like. Okay, girl, whatever. What proof do you and have? look, if it really was good for you, good for you. Okay, let's go back to French. Okay. What do you mean by you're obsessed with anything French? Well, I've always been obsessed with like... <laughs> and how many have you you've been? Huh? You've been mm-hmm. to France? I've been to France, yes. How many times? Just once? Just once. I worked at the Cannes Film Festival mm-hmm. in okay. 2014 for, okay. for a French producer. I got the best job because... Let me back up. So the reason that year was really crazy. 2014 was like a crazy year because I was producing my own web series. I was like, I want to learn how to edit. Two weeks later, I learned about a program where you can learn how to edit and produce. I I took those courses. While I was there, I was like, I want to go to the Cannes Film Festival to apply. Please help me film this like video. So I basically, you know, I spoke in French. I said how much I love everything that's French. And uh, most of my friends who got jobs while we were in France for this internship got jobs with like big companies. So they never, they never had like one-on-one jobs. I got to work. (laughs) I was basically this producer, this French producer's assistant the entire time. I did the whole like double Blackberry thing, like making meetings and all of this. You were a reality show. Yeah, it was, it was the most fun I've ever had. I think like just because it was 16 days of you're seeing, I, I went to nine red carpet premieres. Wow. I remember there was a film Rob Pattinson was in. I was st- sitting like two rows. Twilight, away obviously. Him. It wasn't Twilight. The Batman. Uh, yeah. Oh, that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him. But I can't remember. It I'm was kidding. like some indie kidding. film. Yeah, it was yeah. cool. And uh, yeah, I had like all these gowns. It was so, it was so stressful going, but it was amazing. You like, had ga- gowns. I had wore- two gowns. Okay. Like, and yeah. how'd you get the gowns? Um, I went to like Nordstrom Rack okay. and like got them on sale. And uh Oh yeah, and then I won I won a student Emmy award that summer before for a PSA I produced in the program. It was such a crazy time. And then anyway, in France, it was just like wild. Like I ate so much bread. I was always making sure. And you were sure, vegan by this. And point. I was vegan. Yeah. I made sure things were vegan. They would yeah. be like offended. I'd be like, "Is there cheese?" I'd be like, "Je ne peux pas." I can't imagine. They were like, "We don't have cheese in this," you know. Yeah. 
so offended. But, um, but like I lost every, weight when I was there. Oh, like ten. I lost like ten pounds when I was there because just you because were I was I stressed. think <laughs> I think because I was stressed, but also I was eating so much. But I was also like running around. And I was happy. I'm serious. I was just so happy. Yeah, it was great. It was beautiful. well, especially like to be able to lose weight, but you were eating bread the whole time. Oh, that was and the bread is just. Oh. Yeah. I, have you been to Europe? I can't remember. <laughs> oh, you need to go. The bread alone. <laughs> this girl has never left the country. <laughs> It's all happening. It's going to happen. <laughs> but the top, uh, my top destination, and you know this, and it's on my vision board, uh, Amsterdam. Yes. It's going to happen. Yeah, it is. Don't know when, but yeah, that is that's to be the determined. Top, top of my list. That'll be awesome. Yeah. Uh, I can see you there. Yeah. <laughs> but look, I don't even, I don't even smoke, right? Like, no, but, but it just seems like so cool, cool. to me. Like, like every, like I've had these um, where I've like seen videos of Amsterdam and I just get emotional and I'm oh, just like that thing of like yeah yes yeah. past life or exactly something. Yes. yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah and it's only in the last few years like before then I would have never even maybe you have like unfinished business there or something. dude yeah I do I have a friend in, in Amsterdam or <laughs> and near his Amsterdam. name is <laughs> and I will introduce you to him if you go seriously it can, maybe he can like help you around or yeah get around that'd be dope mm -hmm. all right did you, anything else about French life. French I'm just. So are you like conversational? Uh, conversational. Yeah. I can understand a lot more. Like when uh, when my roommates and I went because we stand in Can La Boca and we used to be like living in Can La Boca. It's like the not fancy part of Can. Uh -huh. Um, whenever we had to order food or take a cab, I like they would try to rip us off. And in French, I'd be like, No, last time you charged us only like ten euros. Now you're trying to charge us ten, twenty. You know, yeah, uh, things like that. But it was. I just loved it. Honestly, when, when the, we, I landed in Nice and when the plane was landing, cause I traveled by myself too. When I saw the coast, the Cote d'Ivoire, I was like, a Cote d'Azur, sorry. That's a different part of the world. Cote d'Azur, I was like, <sighs> I just started crying cause I had wanted to go since I was 14. I just like loved words, like love French words and French cuisine. And yeah. Anyway. The non-dairy parts. About it. The non -dairy, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's what, yeah, I, I, I just remember that my favorite word is immeuble because it's so fun to say. It means building. Oh, I don't even know that word. Oh, meuble. Look, okay. Like when you just, when you hate French class and you like don't like your teacher and you have to cling to any word that is fun to say. And a lot, like a lot of the swear words are not fun, like shit. Like, oh, I don't know. If no, go, okay, yeah. Sorry. We just put a little E in the, okay. in the title. <laughs> for okay, explicit. explicit. Yeah. Ooh, edgy. Yeah. Um, Merd does not, is not satisfying to say. That's shit? That means shit. Isn't that yeah. so not fun? Do you, oh, and f like yeah, if fuck. I say foutois, that's not so, It sounds foutois. like. That's fuck? Yes, yeah, fuck you. That's kind of fun. I guess. Foutois. Oh, ooh, yeah, you said it better. Foutois. <laughs> yeah. No, I like immeuble and I like, because you, immeuble, immeuble. But I also like boulangerie. Oh, boulangerie, yeah. Boulangerie. Okay. Sweet. Croissant. I don't know about you, but like growing up I had. I gave myself like a schedule, like a TV schedule. And oh. I had one for the summertime where like, <laughs> like literally like if I were to wake up as early as 6 a.m., which never happened, I love to sleep in. But I had like, a, like this show is on at 6 a.m. And then I would have a show all the way through like, you know, the early eve, probably till 6 p.m. Or do you remember the show Talk Soup? No, I don't think There was so. this guy, mm. John Hansen, John Henson, John Henson, I believe, who hosted it. So like, yeah, I had myself a schedule. That's how addicted to television I've always been wow. since I was a kid. And then I would have a separate TV schedule for like a Saturday night because I was a loser in high school. <laughs> the most I went out was like not to any parties. I was not getting invited to parties. I was like not popular, but I would have like a guitar lesson or like, I would oh, like, I worked okay. at Sam Goody and I, oh, cool. one of my managers like taught me guitar and um, I would go and do my guitar lesson, but then I would like also have like a TV schedule. And I remember like, it'd be like 5 PM poltergeist, the legacy, 6 PM, the outer limits, 7 PM X files. Cause like X files oh, was X -Files. like syndicated. Mm -hmm. So I had to watch like, deal. and I knew of like, okay, at this time at 2 AM, I can record this episode. This episode will be on. Then at this time I can watch this and yeah. <laughs> And then, uh, oh, there was Cops. Oh, Cops. And there was America's yeah. Most Wanted. Mm -hmm. And that was like my Saturday. <laughs> now let's talk about, <laughs> you were probably not a loser I, like me. I didn't have it that. Listen. And we haven't even gotten into uh, Nickelodeon yet. Yeah, because I was going to say, yeah. TGIF, that was a thing. Okay, yeah. Every Friday night we get like pizza. Do you remember what, my sister. do you remember what, what show? Family Matters. Yeah, fam That's the only thing I hate There's that other anymore. family show. I didn't even look this up. But Snick. Snick. Snick was the big thing. Like all that. Yeah. I forget did what else you, was on watch all that being like I could I could be on the show oh, I could yeah. do this yeah yeah 
Yeah. You were too, right? Oh, oh yeah. please. We could have. Me? We would have killed Who it. does sketch? It's <laughs> like, that's me. Uh, that is me. I will grow up to do that. Yeah. Good burger. You know, what's his name? Keenan Thompson has had an amazing career. I yeah. Mean, just the fact that he's been working this whole time. I'm like, I know. Damn kid. Amazing. That's so cool. Um, um, and then I, yeah, I was looking up stuff and I was like, Roundhouse? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, yep. That was another. Like, um, I'm what thinking, else? okay, not Mad TV, but what was the other show like that Jim Carrey was on? Oh, in Living Color? In Living Color. So I think yep. Roundhouse was like trying to be like an. Yes. Because I think they had dancers. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. You remember. And okay. even the set. Yeah. Yeah. Similar. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, we can do this, but for kids. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so weird. What else was on? Oh, okay. What? Clarissa Explains It All. Oh, classic. Now I Love her. did a little like. I went through like a little rabbit hole of Clarissa. Yes. And it like still holds up for me. Like I'm like, I was watching these like clips and, and I was like, I would watch this again. I would like. I would too. Rewatch Clarissa. She was cool. I could binge- yeah, she was cool. She had a pet baby alligator that lived in a sandbox <laughs> oh, yeah. named Elvis. She had <laughs> the mom, the crazy mom with the tofu. Oh, yeah. I turned in, I guess I've turned into her. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she Sam. Had Sam. With the- <laughs> yeah. And then they had that one episode where they were like, oh, do we think that should we like be more than friends? And then he goes to kiss her. Right. And like, I think I saw the clip where he was like trying to kiss her on the cheek, but she like turned. And so she like did it a mouth kiss. And then he like walks away being like, that was not a good idea. I I just see you. It was like kissing my sister. And I was like, oh, damn. (laughs) The the producers were like, we have to address this. (laughs) Yeah. Um, There was a whole episode where. They were trying to go to a Pearl Jam concert. Yeah. Oh, my God. I remember that so yeah. well. Yes, yes. Cheddar Little. And I felt like. I remember that album. I had that. I I don't think I was, like, into Pearl Jam at that time. Maybe because she was a little bit older. I don't remember. But, like, yes. nowadays, I look and I'm like, oh, that would have been so cool. Like, oh, I love Pearl Jam. I love Eddie Vedder. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get enough of like Eddie Vedder on the like the uh, MTV live acoustic. Oh, that's classic. And he takes oh, his hat era. off and the hair comes down and I'm like <laughs> <laughs> like that is everything. Oh, MTV unplugged. But was back so then good. I wasn't into I don't know what I was into. In terms Ace of, of Base was my very first oh, album. My first CD, first CD ever. Cassette. Oh, okay. Probably was cassette. cassette. I was also obsessed with my Real Jackson McCoy. Oh, mm-hmm. And Ace of Ace. Oh, and man. I think my time. first CD was No Doubt. Tragic oh, Kingdom. Oh, yes. Tragic Kingdom. Yes. And then Smashing Pumpkins, too. Oh, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. But yeah. Yep. Oh, what man. else about... Um, so-called life. I didn't get into my so-called life, though, until... Because that was a little bit before our time. Yeah. Like, we weren't old enough yet. But, yeah. yeah. Claire Danes. Did you watch um, the... So you love Drug Rats, right? Oh, yeah. Was that your favorite, like... Love that cartoon Nick? so much. Yeah, I think so, because okay. I remember it the most, watching it You have most, a favorite yeah. character? <laughs> God, I don't know. I liked I liked the flashbacks when they were younger, and I I just remember Angelica being like cookie, cookie. I don't even know if that's from, but I just love that. It inspired so your latte voice. Yeah, <laughs> cook. Give me a cookie, please. You could follow me on TikTok if you wanted. Let me just say, Casey's <laughs> very popular. Or Casey slash my dog, her dog, latte. <laughs> dog. Who's uh? What, what kind of mix is your dog? Um, she's a multi poo. Multi poo. Uh, has a TikTok <laughs> in which she. Talks about life. Talks about her dog life. Yep. And it's got, what, like 10,000? Almost 10,000. Well, it's more like 7,000 followers. But people are so crazy. After this? Crazy. It'll be <laughs> yeah. a million. A million. So. <laughs> we'll put the link in there. Yeah. Um, so do you remember that, like, <laughs> Nick cartoons were, like, so weird. dirty? So dark and dirty. Yeah. Ren and Stimpy. Yes, Ren and Stimpy. There was some, oh, there's a, there was a weird show that used to be on like late and I can't think of what it, it was so weird. I don't know the name of it. So I was like looking into this. Okay. <laughs> there's this one scene where, um, Ren is like wearing oh, no. a belt that's an ax or a chainsaw of some kind, something that cuts right like this. <laughs> Stimpy <laughs> has his butt <laughs> up. And Ren's behind him. Oh, I, sorry. Yeah, there's sorry. there's like a piece of wood attached to Stimpy's butt. And Ren is literally behind him just like sawing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it makes me want to watch it again. Oh, you need to like look at these clips. It's so ah, funny, dude. Whew. It's so funny. 
Oh my God. And the close ups they used to have, it was like for some reason of their disgusting pimply faces and stuff. Oh, like, I why know. Did they do it? it was so gross. Why were we watching it? Oh, God. Um, uh, did you ever watch um, Rocco's Modern Life? Oh, I love Rocco's Modern yeah. Life. Naked. Yeah. What's the naked part? <laughs> whole weird episode where like and they have like bars over all the private parts oh yeah i think it was um is it heifer who was like walking at night like sleepwalking naked and he's like nay it was like borderline it was really inappropriate like i don't know why we were watching this shit but i loved rocco's voice he's so cute cute. and spunky oh so cute but there were dirty parts so many dirty things you know at one point he becomes a phone sex operator Oh, my God. I think, like, when I was younger, I didn't pick up on that, but now it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He, like, loses his job, and he just, like, looks up in the want ads, and then the next, you you just see him on the phone, and he's like, oh, baby, oh, baby, (laughs) oh, baby. (laughs) And you see, like, the woman that he's talking, like, it's, like, uh, another character, but it's Oh, that's weird. What was the name of the neighbor who was a toad? Yeah, it was, like, the the wife of, yeah. They were really weird. And sometimes and, their mouths would slide off. <laughs> so okay, I this one line uh, comes to me all the time because I'm like part germaphobe. Um, mm-hmm. I thought you were gonna say German, which you are, but anyway. Oh, that too, yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, like especially since like um, the pandemic, like mm-hmm. this one part of Rocco, uh, <laughs> where it's like the turtle, whatever his name was, and he's like working yep. in the comic book store. Yep. He goes, "You turn the page, you wash your hands. You turn the page." <laughs> You wash your hands. And then you just see Rocco and he like spills something all over the comic book and he just like puts it away. I was like, no, that is my life. Yep. And if it wasn't my life before the pandemic, it is, it now, is now. Now it's like I'm literally washing my hands all the time. Oh, what was the phrase that the turtle used to always say? He'd be like, it was something sad. I can't remember. Do you remember? I believe it was him. Or no, there was a there was like another character on Rocco's who was like a jazz singer. <laughs> And I so creepy. forgot to look up that song, but like I, oh, you remember, did you have the talk boy from like Home Alone, the talk boy, the, no. the recorder? No, you had that? <laughs> and talk girl, <gasps> because I was that freaking spoiled as a kid where wow. if I had one thing, but another version came out, I had to have both. Wow. Props to your parents. <laughs> <laughs> and it all went down. <laughs> um, so I like went up to the TV and recorded that whole song. I was like obsessed with it. <laughs> I was obsessed with that jazz song. I can almost think of what it is, but I don't remember. But, oh, man, that was such a good show. This makes me want to watch everything. They also, at one point, um, Mm -hmm. uh, Rocco and Hef uh, go to a motel, (laughs) and it's called the No-Tell Motel. (gasps) And it's um, implied, heavily implied, that it is um, for uh, prostitutes. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> prostitute encounters and when they ask like the front desk clerk and this also i think this particular uh, episode or scene has been banned from tv <gasps> and the yeah but um it's like they ask the the clerk um like do you have any rooms available and they're like yeah we have this one like you know the and they're like, okay we'll take it um and the clerk is like wait for all night like <laughs> and he goes okay Great. I don't often get that. Oh, my God. <laughs> and then you can, like, also hear, like, audio in the background of, like, beds squeaking. Scoop springs. Oh, my God. But the God. clerk is so surprised that these two guys want the room for the whole night and not just a few hours. It's pretty funny. <laughs> Classic. So, okay, you didn't I have you didn't have TV schedules like me. No. I just remember, it, like, Friday Because you night, were cool. Saturday. You were partying. You were in the... I, p- <laughs> I was pretty straight edge, but, like... Yeah, I definitely went out every weekend for sure. Oh, I was like, yeah, that's actually another question I had. Like, wh- like, what kind of places would you go? Like, you like we would hang out at the mall a lot, oh, and yeah. then we had bonfire parties were really big. But oddly enough, oh, I'm from like <sighs> the school I went to is very preppy. Like, I mean, it is Connecticut. <laughs> it is, it is, and we all grew up like it was like it was very bad to drink or do drugs. Like we all accepted that, like as pretty much as a whole. Like the kids who oh, it was like the stoner kids and the kids who do drugs and drink. They're like so like. It was weird because most people I talked to did not have that experience. Mm-hmm. But we, I mean, I had some friends who would drink and stuff, but I wouldn't, and I have felt no pressure to do so. Like I was friends with every single friend group from like. <laughs> what you would call like the nerds to like the popular I would like I was like I just wanted to be friends with everyone and the parties were usually like we'd have bonfire parties watch movies it was very like low-key it was not was there like did you guys have diners that you would go to diners or no um coffee shops really there were some places like my high school was right next to 
the co- University of Connecticut. And then we had like a strip mall. So when you were like a senior, you could go across the street and like go to Starbucks or go to um, Friendly's. Like, oh, there was a place called Kathy John's and they would make their own ice cream. And like, we'd go to places like that. Yeah. It was pretty um, PG. There was like, <laughs> I have this distinct memory of just like one at one point during my high school career realizing that all these kids I went to school with were like partying on the weekends without me. <laughs> oh, like it dawned on you at some point. Oh, oh wait. No. They're talking about having gone to this party on Saturday. Oh, that's what they do. Oh, that's what they do. Oh, they drink? Wait, they're having sex. Yeah. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> For someone who like, and I'm not going to, get into a specific age at this oh, point yeah. at, in the third episode another, i'm not gonna another. get into but like i was late to life in a couple of areas and so yeah, yeah me too learning that they were just doing it all <laughs> at 17 Shocking, i was right? like because you're like wait yeah what? i'm at home watching cops <laughs> okay <laughs> that's what i'm doing <laughs> um casey very important uh, question yeah let's say it's the last day on earth mm. so it's you know the world is ending okay where do you go? What do you do? What do you eat? Okay. So are we doing it from like, like we're here, like I'm in LA and it's like, shit, there's one day left or does it matter? Or <laughs> let's stretch it so that in some way you can just travel wherever you yeah. want. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> I think some part of me feels like I would go absolutely insane. Like yeah. that I would be like, I want to graffiti the wall. Like, oh, okay. I mean, that's not that crazy, I guess. Or I want to like um, be loud and obnoxious. Like I want to like, uh, you know, like um, overtake a studio and like be on the news and like go create like something like that, like making a really loud splash that seems like it matters at the time, but then doesn't. Um, I'd want to get all my friends together. I'd be like, we need to like go on a road trip. I don't know. I'd just want to like go somewhere and be loud and obnoxious. And food would be a very big thing. Now, it's funny because I was thinking all the, well, not all the best food is here, but we'd have to go to, if you're involved with this, we'd have to go to Donut Friend. We'd eat all the oh. donuts. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, Donut Friend, for sure. I'd want to eat all of the food at Doomies, which is in Hollywood. So good. Um I would want the pizza from back home. I would, oh, oh, and then I'd somehow be able to go to France. I would get like all the bread from France. I would just like, I would definitely gorge myself all day long. Yeah. I mean, that's all I can really think of. And I think part of me- Mine's a little more chill story. (laughs) I feel like I want to like, I would go crazy. Like I just want to go- Yeah, mine's a little more chillax. What is it? (laughs) Um, (laughs) Hang out by the pool. (laughs) My like Leo rising is like, let's just light the world on fire. What yeah. part of my chart or signs is like the okay. hanging by the pool, Palm Springs situation? I think it's, I feel like I'd want to take a look at where your Venus is. Do you remember your Venus is? It's like with the things that you value. Oh. Um, I would say definitely you're the sun in cancer. You have some water placements though. You have, I know yeah. you have some water placements. Capricorn, I'm not, I, it's kind of, it's not really chill. I don't think that there's yeah. got to be something else that I'm not thinking of in your chart. Yeah. Like Venus. Because um, it's like, right. I'm not a big fan of the outdoors. <laughs> oh, see, I'm like, yeah. I, like I don't go. like hiking. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't like jump chill. out of a plane or anything. I wouldn't do. Would you jump out of a plane if it was like your last day? <sighs> I almost did like five years ago, but I, I ended up not doing it. Um, You still want maybe. to or no? And not anymore. No, no, no. I, there was, I went through a whole phase where I was like, I'm going to do all these things. I get a tattoo and I didn't do any of those things. Yeah. Um, it's, but it was because every time I almost tried, it happened multiple times where like my plans got canceled. So I was like, maybe I'm just right. not supposed to do this. I would want to have like, like if I could hop over to Italy and have like the best pizza ever. Like yeah. I, I love pizza. I'd want pizza. Um, I think it'd be fun to travel with friends, like to yeah. all the places you want to go. Yeah. But yeah. And th- the, also the crazy thing is, I always tell people, like, I'm not a beach person. Mm-hmm. I did grow up near a beach, and I never went. That's I'm, I'm kind of near the beach, and I never go. Time. I know, I never do. I don't, yeah. I like. I would like it if it was, like, tropical, and I could, like, see through the water and the ocean. You know, it'd be mm-hmm. like, that's different. It's like a tropical beach, but I don't like just, like, a Jersey Shore beach or an L.A. beach. Or, but, yeah, I do like a pool. <laughs> that's so <laughs> like funny. Calm water, clear calm water, water mm-hmm. no waves, no salt water, no creatures in there to... to <laughs> Stingy, Sterile, bite me. <laughs> Did you That's collect funny. anything as a kid? Yes, I collected rocks. 
I had a thing. I, did you ever rocks. make like a rock garden? Like um, I, one school project I had, I had to make little like a little rock like people and like little basketball oh. court and they were oh like God, playing basketball. Cute. I wish I did. I would have so done. I would have done that if you gave me that idea. I'd be like, I'm going to do it. Well, I remember we went to, there's a dinosaur state park in Connecticut. And I remember we went there and there were like fossils and like you, this is so not exciting, but it was like a box that had all the little samples glued in it. And I would just like open it sometimes and just be like, <laughs> this is so cool. And another thing that we did in kindergarten during recess, I don't know how we got away with this shit, but <laughs> we would take rocks and then we would take turns smashing the rocks to like see the geodes inside. And then we'd like divvy them up like, okay, you can have this if you give me this. And like, it's kind of weird actually. And huh. one time my cousin, cause my cousin, I grew up next door to him. He's four days, no, two weeks, two weeks older than me. I remember one time he, <laughs> he smashed the rock as I was going to grab it. And he like broke, my nail fell off because he smashed it so hard. Anyway, Side uh, tangent. Um, but yeah, I loved, I just loved sparkly rocks and things. Yeah. I they were cool. And now you collect Which crystals. Sense. And now here we are. Mm -hmm. I, um, did you ever do like the drive throughs of like McDonald's, Burger King and collect the toys? And oh yeah. Yeah, that? I remember okay. that. Yeah, a little bit. They had like special edition stuff. I what? had an entire bookshelf. <laughs> <laughs> like it was like Goosebump books that oh, I didn't read. Yeah. Oh, I remember didn't those. Didn't read. Mm -hmm. I don't read. <laughs> just had them because they were everyone had them and they had like the goosebumps on them and then like another um like shelf of it would be like like whatever i was collecting at the time but i do they i do remember like um collecting like disney cups from burger king i believe something like that but yeah i would go through those phases of collecting like i had to get everything in the collection oh and wow so, but i was also a super unhealthy kid where i was like eating fast food every day oh, so no. it was like Oh, if we're just going to go there anyway, again, like, let's see if they have the next cup in the series, you know? That's so funny. So that's what I collected. Wow. Um, I feel like we pretty much nailed everything. Is I there am impressed. What? Another TV show. You loved Alex Mack. Secret Life oh, of Alex Mack. You wanted yeah. her powers. Yes. What powers would you have right now if you could have any powers? Oh. Because you already I would have. I fly for sure. Okay. I don't really care about the invisibility thing. That just strikes mm -hmm. me as creepy. But if I could do the thing where she melts and like, well, I'm going to leave and go. <laughs> I would totally do that where she melts and goes under the door. Um, yeah, I think flying is the main. That's so not. Yeah. That's so boring. I, I would um, be able to like, I would want to like snap my finger and just travel to wherever. Oh, yeah. Because traveling. Like to make things move too. <laughs> if I can avoid p the parking situation in L.A. <laughs> at any can cost. Imagine? I will do that. Oh, just be, be so anywhere. Nice. Yeah. Just like over there. Um, I brought up the show Space Cases with you. Oh yeah, and you actually remembered. I do. It like you you pulled like a crazy ma like I forgot. She does this a lot to me. She's like, "Do you remember this song <laughs> from 1996?" And I'm like, "No." And then I'm like, "Ah, I do." Um, yeah, I remember the rainbow hair chick. I remember Catalina. like alien. Oh, see, I don't remember their names. I just remember Catalina them. was from a, one of Saturn's moons. Oh, and she had a friend named Susie who she would talk to and everyone else on the ship thought she was an imaginary friend. Oh, and she okay. said, she's not imaginary. She's invisible. She's in a different dimension. We can see each other. We can talk to each other. We're on the same bra brain wavelength. That's that why we deep. can. And, accurate. and guess what? what? She turned out to be real. Susie was real. Susie actually took over. Cause like Catalina left and then Susie came on and I, so like Susie's hair to me was so dope. Oh yeah. Susie had like red streak, a blue streak, a purple streak. And it did evolve a little bit over the, you know, the one season she did. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't only on but a But I was so obsessed. And of course, my mom was like, would never let me color my hair. Right? No, no. But like she took me one day to this beauty shop or um, beauty supply store, like where they had wigs and all this stuff, like hair stuff. And at the time, you could buy these little like clipping <gasps> hair. Yes! You oh just God. clicked in the colors. Those were awesome. And so I bought the Susie streaks and I would just be in my house <laughs> wearing the Susie colors in the, oh, and I'd be like, man, that is so cool. Oh. Did you ever, for a while, it was kind of like in, when in middle school to like braid your hair and put beads on it. And like, did you ever do that? There was like a whole year where I did, <laughs> my mom would like change my braid every week. And I thought it was so cool. Just oh, I one do. Braid. No, I do remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There were, there was that trend for sure. Wow. Although my mom, having gone through like beauty school and like to be a hairstylist, she did not know how to French braid my hair. Are you serious? Mom. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
So, <laughs> so you were a little disappointed. But yeah, she wouldn't let me do some stuff. Um, Casey, is there anything else? Oh, let's just what? like plug all your stuff because you got a lot going oh, on. Okay. Okay. So, all right. So first thing, if this drops this week, um, next weekend, which is April 3rd, Sunday, I will be in Pasadena at Dual Crossroads. I'll be doing readings all day from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. You should stop on by. It's free entry. Now, when they're doing the readings from you, they should tip you, right? Or how does that work? It, it'll, I'm doing, I'm only doing one type of reading. I'm going to do, um, and it's cheaper than I normally do, but it's 15 minutes for 20 bucks. Okay. Just to like, the really, the reason I'm doing this is to the like- 15 is good. Clients. Yeah, I think yeah. it's way cheaper than a lot of other people. So it's it's competitive pricing. Um, what's the other thing? Oh, you can also find me on, yeah, twitch.tv slash Casey Ace of Hearts. I also am on Hey Hero. Have you ever heard of Hey Hero? What is that? It's like this spiritual website. It, <gasps> I was on a waiting list for a year. They didn't let me in. What? And now I'm like, now they're like, you're accepted. I'm like, oh, okay, excuse me. Like Marin Altman's on it and like people like that, but I don't have hey, hero. anybody yet. Yeah, it's I, like a video. It's like you do video readings. Okay. Like somebody can buy a reading for me and I'll get back to them with like a little video reading, a little private reading. So there's that. Um, in terms of like my business, I have a business called Woe Accelerator. It stands for Writer's Option Accelerator. It's a platform for screenwriters to sell their scripts or option their scripts to producers. And we have an app that uh, my business partner, Jeremy Andrews, is developing. It's going to be dropping, should be the beginning of April. And um, yeah, there's information. It's uh, woeaccelerator.com. You can find us on Instagram. And yeah, we've just been working on this business since the pandemic started. Yeah, <laughs> so working hard. It's all virtual. It's like, it's crazy. It's a big undertaking, but it's it's fun. And remind people else? that you don't have to pay to join. Like you, it's like an application process, right? Oh, so there's two different things. So, okay. In order to submit your script to the marketplace, that part is free. If you get in, there is a subscription fee, but unlike, well, I don't know if I should say other places, other places we don't charge per script we just it's unlimited scripts that get in they might not all get in because we vet everything we also vet every producer that comes on we're not going to just let anybody come on in um so it's 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 good because then you get you also get paid you get paid directly there's no middleman there's no agent it's just you get paid if somebody decides hey i want to option your script or buy it they can do it and you're instantly paid so it's it's really cool we're trying to kind of um I guess, disrupt the market that way a little bit. There's no red tape and we're probably going to get some pushback, but it's exciting. Nice. Yeah. You yeah. got your Twitch. You got Can't Whole Accelerator. Else. You got the event coming up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm on Instagram. You can find me at Casey McD. Casey McD. <laughs> My actor, whatever, actor, whatever. Um, any writing projects? Is I mean, you've oh. written so many things. And the cool thing I realized too is like, mm-hmm. you know, this is my third episode, third guest, and y'all have... All of you are writers. Oh, that that's yeah. really cool. Yeah. Got to write. I haven't written more than two sketches. <laughs> yeah, but you, you, I mean, if you want to, it's you, cooking. you can. Yeah, it's, it's cooking. cooking. <laughs> I have a feature. I've given myself to the end. I've been working on this thing. It's been through so many edits since, um, I don't know, it's been like five years. And I was like, that's it. You're going you're gonna to finish this by the end of March and you're going to be done. And then I want to do a table read with like you and some other people just to have actors, you know, just to hear it out loud. And I'm excited. I mean, I would like to produce that eventually but right now i'm just finish- like you got to finish writing it you got to finish yeah. it but i have a bunch of different things i've written like i had a play um it's called don le jardin and that was based on really briefly it was based on a kind of a near-death experience i won't even touch on that another time uh that i had and so that play premiered in new york at the crane theater in 2018 and so i was thinking about putting it up here just for fun like why not you know um but yeah there's always something going on that's about it for me. Love it. You're so talented. <laughs> You're so Thanks. creative. Oh my god. It's like really good having your energy around. <laughs> oh my god, I feel the same way. Like- <laughs> Even if you drain batteries. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. I can't help it. Um, well, thank you, Casey, for being here. Um and thank you all so much for listening, downloading, yeah. watching. Um, this is just gonna be a journey, an ongoing experience, and I hope to continue it. Uh during my travels to the East Coast and you will and coming back and and yeah and thank you so much to Paul Antonio Yay, for Paul. Um, at Flashback <laughs> Studio uh, on Melrose um, for helping me again and uh, yeah this is obsessed much bye. bye. <laughs>